Hey guys, Adam Rose, Vice President and Senior Loan Officer of Western Ohio Mortgage here in Sydney, Ohio. Today is another episode of the Mortgage Guy Podcast, and today we've got some announcements and we have some refi talk, right? I kind of touched on this last po- or two podcasts ago about what's going on in the market and does it make sense and what are some options, right? Um, again, for some people, doing a refinance might make complete sense right now. Some people want to hang on tight and see where they go. So just let's just see. I'll give you some options and you make a decision. And then you're going to call me, and we're going to get it done. Uh, anyways, uh, coming up September 16th, if you want to see me, I know all my fans want to meet me and get autographs. Not really, but uh, OMBA, the Ohio Mortgage Bankers, I am the vice president of, we have our annual outing. So if you are a member of the OMBA or an affiliate member or know someone that is a member and you want to play in that, we are playing on Monday, September 16th at uh, Tartan Field in Dublin. So it should be a good time. Uh, the shotguns start at noon, so shoot me a message if that's something you want to get into there, and uh, we can get this uh, the whole scramble filled. So, anywho, let's talk about refinancing, right? So we've been seeing a lot of market movement, rates going all over the place, rates dropping, announcements that the Fed's cutting again. There's there's all kinds of stuff happening, right? And the market's freaking out. They don't know what's what. Rates drop, they bump back up. They drop, they bump back up. They normalize. A lot of, lot of stuff happening. Okay, so we gotta find that nice soft sweet spot on whether or not it makes sense for us to do a refinance for anybody that might have closed in the last eighteen months. Right now, they're my target audience. Right in this conversation. However, even the people that closed back in twenty and twenty one might be in a position to look at a cash out. Am I pushing you to that? No. The reason I even bring it up is just because the consumer debt in America is at an all-time high over a trillion dollars, and people are using credit more than ever to survive. So take a look at your certain your circumstance. Take a look at your debt obligations. Even if you're in a lower rate environment, it could make sense to tap in to that equity, which is one of the announcements. So in the second quarter of 2024, U.S. U.S. tappable home equity reached a record $11.5 trillion, trillion with a T, as in Tom, as in trillion, as in give me a trillion, fueled by rising home prices that outpaced the $13.8 trillion in mortgage debt. According to ICE Mortgage Monitor, great name for it, by the way, right? Uh, 32 million borrowers now have at least $100,000 in tappable equity with 4.6 million having at least a half a million dollars in equity. And nearly 1.2 million have more than a million dollars in equity, with higher equity holders tending to have lower first lien rates as well. Despite the increase in mortgage debt, the loan-to-value ratio remains low on average at 44.1% loan-to-value. That's awesome, right? That's good news. That means people are in these low rates, they're paying down their mortgages quicker. They have a lot of equity available for emergency purposes. Or if they want to sell their home, they can make a ton of money on it. Uh, with potential Federal Reserve rate cuts on the horizon, the home equity lending market may see renewed activity even as mortgage delinquencies tick up slightly. Um, all right, so let's talk. Uh, let's let's get out of cash out land for a minute, all right, for people that have all that equity. It's still a good thing for rate terms, Okay. So let's talk about options. I am uh, one of the top producers in the country for USDA financing. It's my favorite program. Well, guess what? They have my favorite refinance program too. Kudos to them. So you have to own your home for at least 12 months. That's the key. All right. USDA, 12 months. They got a streamline option. Here's the beautiful thing about it. Okay. It's called the streamline assess or I don't know. They, they've got 17 different names for all these products. In a nutshell, USDA will allow you to reestablish your escrow account and finance that into the loan amount. Okay. If you have any title fees, if you have any lender fees, you can finance it into your loan amount. You don't need an appraisal. Ha ha. Isn't that amazing? Right. Don't need an appraisal. There's certain circumstances where they will have to have an appraisal. I'm not going to dive into all that right now. It's a case by case basis, but it's beautiful. You finance everything in, you drop your rate, you drop your payment. We move on with our day. Right. The question becomes, when you're talking to your lender, you need to have in your head, what is the dollar figure that makes sense for me to save for me to pull the trigger? Or maybe you talk in terms of rates and you're thinking long-term. What's the rate trigger? You need to have that in mind 
and not be sold on the idea of it makes sense to refinance because you know you've got a seven and I can get you a six and a half, right? Don't just go with that. Have something in mind and create a plan for yourself. All right, it's very important. We're just going to go through options here. All right, so USDA, fantastic. FHA gets a little confusing because there's like five different options. So we're going to talk about three primaries, right? Um, we're going to talk about the, the FHA streamline. So a lot of people wondered why we pushed FHA so much when we were in that weird 21 market, 22 market, you know, high prices, high rate, you know, all the stuff started to move. And um, the beautiful thing about FHA instead of conventional is they have a streamline option. Okay. So let's say you bought, I don't know, in 2023, you know, rates were hitting the sevens. And I don't know, maybe you lost your job or maybe maybe you took a pay cut or maybe you've been living on credit card debt and you bought a new car and your debt ratio is just so out of whack that there's there's no digging out of it right now, right? But you still want to save money on your house payment. Well, the streamline option is there. They have an option to do uh, mortgage only with credit scores, all right, and refinance your mortgage regardless of your debt obligations, your debt ratio, regardless of having an appraisal done, you don't need one. The restriction is, is what your loan amount can be. Your loan amount cannot exceed your original note balance, okay? So you're not financing a bunch of closing costs in there. However, all right, here's what happens. What you can do and what you get is when you refinance this, you get hit with that beautiful mortgage insurance, the upfront mortgage insurance fee that goes FHA, but you already paid that one. So you're going to get a refund that's credited towards your loan amount. So you'll be able to put a little bit of your expenses into your loan. Okay. Not a ton, but you can design it as such. Maybe, I don't know. Again, I'm not quoting official rates here. Every case is case by case basis. I'm not disclosing APR. I'm not doing any of that stuff. I'm just talking generalities. Okay. Let's say XYZ borrower can get a 6% rate, for example, and but they need four thousand dollars to close this loan and they just don't have it right what you can try to do is you can try to look into premium pricing talk to your lender about it say well what if i take a six and a quarter can i get a rebate back to help with closing costs yes you probably can that every lender is going to be totally different in regards to what their pricing looks like for their consumer your credit score profile a lot of stuff okay but it's just a thought keep that in mind um, but that streamline option is fantastic. If, if someone ran into trouble, but they've always made their mortgage payment, you could still jump into the refinance market. Okay. Um, you've got rate terms, so that's normal, right? You do, you pay for an appraisal. You can finance your closing costs in your homeowner's insurance, your property taxes and refill your escrow account, all that fun stuff. Uh, but you have an appraisal. Okay. Rates are very, very attractive with that program. And then you have your cash outs. So each one of these things kind of have a cash out except for USDA. Um, anyways. USDA is not designed to, to pull out a bunch of equity out of your house. It's designed to keep your payment down. Um, so FHA cash out, almost, except for VA, which we'll talk about briefly, uh, all need to be at an 80% loan to value. Okay, again, example, your house is worth 100. That means you can do an $80,000 total loan amount. All right. So the FHA cash out is a great, great pricing. Rates are very, very competitive, uh, but you cannot exceed 80% loan to value on those. You do need an appraisal done. Okay, so let's hit... VA real fast. All right. So VA options. Oh, by the way, there is a large lender out there being sued because they aren't following the rules on the VA cash out options in regards to cost rates terms because VA, like other programs, we still got to fill this stuff out. But VA is very, very hard lined on the uh, veteran's ability to recoup their expenses of the mortgage of doing the refinance over a 36 month period of time. And there's worksheets you have to fill out to make sure you are accomplishing that for them. Anyways, so VA, VA Earl, I-R-R-L, okay, interest rate reduction loan, fantastic. It's the same thing as that USDA streamline. I can finance in closing costs. I can finance your homeowner's insurance in there. I do not need to get an appraisal done, all right? It is designed to reduce your interest rate, all right? And if you, you can finance reasonable and customary closing cost expense into your loan, all right? Which, again, I keep saying all right. I said last time I would stop doing that. I'm going to try. All right. All right. All right. So uh, anyways, you can finance all that fun stuff in. 
you can move on with your day. It's a great program for veterans uh, to drop their rate, drop their payment. They have a cash out and they're more aggressive on their cash out. Now, we can do it. Um, it's not as attractive. Okay. So typically speaking, almost all loan programs want 80% loan to value. VA likes the sweet spot is 89.99% loan to value. And I'm going to have lenders on here. Oh, you can go higher. Yes, you can go higher. You can go 100%. It's going to have an impact on your rate. All right. A lot of loan servicers out there aren't a fan of that program. Uh, and there's going to be a ding on your pricing. So it will have an impact. And now you got to figure out if it makes sense for you to do it because now you got a little bit higher rate possibly. Um, so it's not to rule out that you can't do 100%. But the target in your sweet spot is 89.99% loan to value on a VA cash out refi. So FYI there. So they give you a little bit more leniency. Uh, conventional. So the plus, conventional is just conventional. All right. There's no streamline option. Um, you can finance all your stuff in there. You get an appraisal done. That's just normal. However, uh, every now and again, if you have a ton of value in your home and we plug it in that way, Fannie or Freddie, we might get a property inspection waiver, PIW. The best thing that ever came across your findings when you run these files. You get the beautiful PIW that says, you, the buyer, do not have to get an appraisal done. Now hold your horses, all right? If anything in that file changes, if we validate income and it was a little off, maybe your debt ratio changes, if, if, if insurance comes in higher, if w whatever, loan amount changes, okay? If you start changing, start playing with that stuff, that PIW may go away, all right? There's been times where we haven't changed anything and we run, rerun it and it goes away. And I cannot control that. If a lender tells you that they can control that, they are full of, <clears throat> you know, that stuff. So um, talk to your lender. Take a look at it. It's pretty cool. But there's a lot of options out there, guys. That's not even touching on the non-QM stuff. Like if you're in trouble, you had a bankruptcy. You have, there's a bunch of other options out there. They're a little different. They're non-conforming. Uh, if you need them, they're there. Uh, I'm not going to uh, advise that you, that's the first rough that you look at. Uh, but it's possible. Uh, you got to remember also, guys, that if you're an investor, you can do investment cash outs on your investment properties. Is it pretty? Nope, it is not. But if you need to tap into equity, you can't rule it out. There's a lot of home equity line of, uh, of credit programs that even we offer that you can do on non-owner occupied if you need to access cash fast. We do that through something called Nifty Door. All right. So give us a holler if you have any questions about refinancing your home. Is it the right time for you? But when you have these conversations or if you're entertaining it, make sure you have a number in your head, whether it's the rate, whether it's a monthly dollar payment, all right, that I need to save for this to make sense regardless, okay? So keep that in mind. I hope that information was helpful, guys. Remember, subscribe on YouTube. Check us out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We'll catch you all next week.